All right, time for another algebra video. And we're going to start out by talking about quotients. So what is a quotient? I'm going to let H be a subgroup of G. We need to find a quotient um, um, by starting with the set and we're going to do um, G mod H and so what is G mod H? G mod H um, which is G endowed with the equivalence relation um, where x is equivalent to y if and only if x inverse y is an element of h x inverse y is an element of h so I say this is an, an equivalence relation, uh, but whenever I say something without proving it, you shouldn't believe me. And that holds for anything in math. So how would we prove that this is an equivalence relation? Okay, what about x being equivalent to x? x inverse x is, well, x is equivalent to x if and only if x inverse x is an h, but x inverse x is e, the identity element. And since, e, since H is a subgroup, we know that it contains the identity element. And so that holds. Then for um, uh, what, Sy symmetry or reflexivity? I don't know, whatever it is. We want Y is equivalent to X if and only if X, yeah. X is equivalent to Y if and only if Y is equivalent to X. And that's true because um, x is equivalent to y if and only if x inverse y is an h, but h is a subgroup so it's closed under taking inverses, so the inverse of x inverse y is an h, but the inverse of x inverse y is y inverse x. And yeah, I guess that's another fact that we didn't really talk about. I think at this point I'm just going to go forward and kind of assume that you've already... Give, give, given the pace of that we're going through this preliminary group theory stuff, I'm sort of going to assume that you've seen a lot of this stuff before. So I know there's a really good lecture series online, uh, like if you go on YouTube. Um, there's a professor at Harvard, I believe. Uh, oh, what's his name? I, I, I've, I've watched his lectures a ton. He has a great introductory... Uh, YouTube series um, and it goes through his lectures from a class that he taught and he goes through group theory and then ring theory and then I think maybe a little bit of no I don't think he covers Galois theory I think he covers ring theory instead of Galois theory but in any case um, yeah so that's an excellent YouTube series and there's no way I can compete with that so it's kind of good that I'm that there is still room out there for videos and things that are sort of a step up beyond things like that because that's opportunities for people like me to try to make videos and if you don't like the way I'm doing things please make your own video series because the more video series we have for lectures for especially upper level math courses then the better so I'm going to assume you know that the inverse of x inverse y is y inverse x. And if you don't know that, you can prove it. It's really short. But anyways, that proves that reflexivity for transitivity, I don't know, just do it. I don't remember the details, and I could do it right now, but I don't want to take the time. I should keep an eye on the time. That's also important, because I realize my video is cut off after like 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, did I write it down? Um, 
Uh, yeah, I did. Transitivity holds. So I already talked through uh, the the first two. Um, transitivity is the last one. This holds because if x inverse y and y inverse z are in H. So if x is equivalent to y and y is equivalent to z, that means x inverse y and y inverse h, y inverse z are both in H. Um, and so if these two are in H, then so is their product, x inverse y times y inverse z. Uh, but that's just x inverse z is in H, i.e., x is equivalent to z. So there you go. That's how you do transitivity. Um, and that's the end of the line. Well, the, the line in my paper, so I'm just going to put a dot there. I don't, want, I don't want to waste a whole line of board space for two words. Okay. Um, instead of calling this a definition, I'm going to write this in, as an observation, and it will turn into a definition. So observe that x inverse y is in h if and only if um, y is in xh. This is because if x inverse y is in h, that means x inverse y equals h for some little h and big h, and that means that y is equal to x times h, which means that y is in x times big H. So you have to be a little careful when you're doing computations like this involving both elements of a group and subgroups of a group. But you can do these, and it is good to be comfortable doing them because it makes proofs and exercises a lot easier. So we have this, and then this is if and only if. So if y is in xh, that means that yh is equal to xh. And so what this means is uh, we can write elements of um, g mod h in the form G the form G times H um, where of course little g is in big G now why do we have to go through this basically what this is saying is that if two if we have two elements that are equivalent, then if we write them in this way, they end up being the same. And so if we write elements of GH in the form GH, then this is going to be equal to, um, GH is going to be equal to G prime H for any G prime in this coset. I.e., there's, there's no, because we're choosing a, um, when we write GH here, we're using a choice of G, of little g. Um, we have to choose a, an element, a little g, of big G to use to represent this coset. But it doesn't matter which element of the coset we use. Oh, why am I talking about cosets? I haven't even described what a coset is. What I mean is equivalence class. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, um, of course, we have this This quotient is the set with an equivalent relation. And so um, the, the quotient is the, the, the set that underlines the quotient is G mod H, which is a collection of equivalence classes. And so, anyways, so this is the form G, H, G, and G. Um, Okay, I'm realizing I'm running a little short on time, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Um, 
we call GH a left coset. And that's why I said left coset before, because it's a left coset. Why do we say left coset? That's because that's where the little g goes. Um, the real reason is because left cosets arise when you consider left translation as a group action. But we're not quite there yet. We'll be there soon, but not right now. Okay. And so I think I'm going to stop there for now um, just to give my video a break. And then we'll start back up with a proposition.